question for you, everybody. This is not, this is in no way to like, to, no way to judge. Uh, but let me know on screen, for new people, I'll explain um, whether you managed to listen to the podcast or not this week. Because it lets me know if I'm talking to how many people have listened to it and might have perspective and how many people are like, I, I needed to start from scratch. The way for all, so Sandra, or, oh, it might be, there might be, it's because your routine. The new people, the way that you vote is if you go to view options at the top of your screen, and then if you click on that, you should get a little drop down menu. You want to go to annotate and then stamp and then star. So it's view options at the top, stamp and star for anyone that can't do it. Um, you can just put it in the chat, but generally it doesn't matter. I think it looks like 50-50, I would say 50-50. Uh, so the 50% that have listened can maybe sort of uh, build, build on what I'm going to share as well. Um, just out of interest, what's stuck for the people that are over in this, in this camp? You managed to squeeze it in. Uh, anything that's stuck in particular from the, from the episode? Oh, I kind of share some some things that I definitely have stuck in, around my head. Oh, and we've got a matrix, everybody. <laughs> I sent a picture to Sarah this morning and I was like, managed to get a matrix in. She just shakes her head at me. Um, but let me know in chat what's stuck from this week. Oh, you're welcome to come off mute. You do not all have to be muted. Need some rituals for work. Very routine. That's interesting. That's interesting. Like, almost like a balance. Uh, Oh, I love that, Chloe, realising how many rituals workplaces have. I, I want to get us sharing some of those, actually, um, <laughs> particularly if they're around food. Which I'm, I'm all up for food based rituals. Um, oh, Helen, don't worry about annotations on phone. Completely fine. Difference between ritual and routine. I'm going to talk about that, Sandra, as well. The idea of what you want to get out of it beforehand. Yeah, feelings first. We're going to do a bit of that. Um, being present to, yeah okay so what are we going to do over the next 24 minutes I, I'm going to do a bit of summarizing about rituals and routines but really other than sharing the matrix <laughs> I really wanted us as a community to share some things with each other and see if we can help each other to build some more rituals so I've not got like loads of new stuff prepared also partly because there's not a lot of stuff that we didn't cover on the podcast because it's not, it's not a topic that's been covered extensively. But I have got a summary of some different ideas for actions, but I thought that we could try and help each other um, to develop some new rituals by sharing and building. So that, that's my plan. We will see how it goes. Uh, it could be a short session or not. Uh, just so that you know, all of this stuff is here for you if you want to dive even deeper. So we have the pod sheet, um, so that's kind of an editable template. You can do this yourself. You can share it with your teams. Um, that's all on amazingif.com. And the, the sort of swipeable summary of some of the key points, particularly on team, team based. And then Sarah and I always like to sort of do a what would you listen to next is always in my is always in my mind. Um, did a podcast. Well, actually, this one was this one was 2020. I think this one might have been mate. Mm, that might have been early 2020 as well. Um, but the first one was Mindset with Ben Williams. Ben is um, an ex-commando in the Marines. I don't know if any of you listened to it. Really interesting guy. And he's written a book called The Commando Mindset. And we talk a lot about mindset in that uh, in that podcast, which I think is uh, an interesting build on this. I think if you're going to invest in rituals, um, I think the mindset that you go into it with is important. So you might like the one with Ben. Uh, he has some funny, funny stories about all marine life. Um, and as in, not as in, in marine life, like fish, you know, like being a royal marine. Uh, and rest with Alex Pang. Alex Pang talks about this concept called active rest, which I find really interesting. And we sometimes talk about this on our resilience course, just a kind of quick insight into that. He talks about the difference between being restful, i.e. at sleep, or maybe meditating, um, and restless i.e. you're doing 101 things all at the same time. And he says that the most powerful thing for us to do for our brains is actually active rest, which is where we intentionally focus on one activity that absorbs our attention so that we can shut off all the noise and distractions that normally take us to a different place. And so I think this is probably where ritual sits like active rest, when you are doing something and you're present and you're mindful and you're in the moment to the extent that some of the noise quietens down a little bit. So I just thought if you wanted to understand a little bit more about active rest and the podcast with Alex, Alex Pang. Um, ah, right, exactly. Yeah. So painting is a very good example of active rest. Other, other things, you know, some people do gaming. Um, some people might do 
um, puzzles, you know, whatever, but it's that intentional activity that could be a little ritual music. Oh, Helen, I'm just reading yours. When working as a head teacher, I set up a ritual called Team Circle. Each team got together for 10 minutes at the end of the day on a Monday just to connect. That is a great example of a collective ritual, which we are going to come on to. Yes, Fiona, swimming. I've been swimming twice in the past week. I think I'm going to try. Well, in my head, I was like, I think I might be a swimmer now. I even looked at the local pool times, but I've, I've not committed yet. Anyway, two, two uh, quotes that I liked um, around rituals. Uh, this one is from Nest Labs, which I hadn't, I hadn't come across before I started researching the podcast. But it said that the difference between a ritual and routine is the attitude behind the action. Um, and I quite, I think I quite like the alliteration of it. It was quite sticky. But I thought that was quite interesting because, um, you know, there is a different attitude behind a ritual. It is more purposeful. It is more mindful. It is more in this kind of intentional active rest, whereas routines are more about um, efficiency and ease. And um, that's kind of where we're going to there. So I think I think that's kind of an interesting thing to have in mind that there's a different attitude behind the action when we're differentiating between a ritual and a routine. Um, another one I loved with this quote from um, Maria Popova, who is the founder of Brain Pickings. I don't know if any of you have been on that website but brain pickings is lovely it is it's such a nice website to spend time on and um, just very sort of random curiosity beautifully shared anyway she says that the structure of routine um is comforts us and the specialness of ritual revitalizes us and i thought that was interesting you know that routines can be comfortable they can give us some comfort in a busy day because they give us that efficiency and that ease but rituals do something different for us they they vitalize us um so i found both those quite interesting um Marta says i think the same applies to ritual versus ceremony yeah yeah and ritual always having a spiritual touch i mean i think to some extent being mindful is and purposeful has kind of that spiritual element doesn't it in, in our work so this thing, collective versus individual, we talk about this on the podcast, that you your routines can either be collective, i.e. multiple people do these, sorry, rituals, um, multiple people are doing these kind of rituals together. So, you know, team, team based, for example, or organizational ones, or they can be individual. So this is something that you, you alone do. Um, and so just to give you some of the examples that I shared on the podcast, I remember at, um, <laughs> Capital One, uh, when I worked there, they had baps and claps always stuck always stuck in my mind bats and claps happened every week uh senior people used to go around with a trolley uh with uh sausage baps and bacon baps on i think it was on a uh friday and they basically it was to celebrate some some of the stuff that had been achieved that week um and it was such it was such a good team ritual for everyone that was part of this particular project and bats and claps it you know brought everyone together everyone was quite excited about it they got some free food back to the point about food-based rituals <laughs> Seem to, seem to be interesting um, and then in terms of individual rituals I think I think the one that I've done for the longest and the one that I would find hardest if you took it away from me was probably my breakfast ritual back to food um, so literally being up in the morning on my own like having breakfast like just sort of reading like quiet time in my day if I don't have that I feel like my I'm, my mind's a bit busy um I value that so much that it's worth like I literally do it even if I get in so this is an honest story um my daughter's not very well at the moment I just explained to Sarah in our team and I had to stay in her bed last night till three o'clock this morning I still got up at half past five and had my breakfast on my own I mean it's slightly weird but that is how much I value my kind of breakfast Kind of ritual on my own um so i thought it'd be good just to get a bit of insight into some of yours so maybe let's start with this could you head into chat and let and just share some collective rituals because i think they're both interesting but also might be quite inspiring for us all so what are some of the collective rituals either now or ones that you've had in the past um in teams what things do you do that help bring people together that they have that specialness that vitalizes the team. It's the baps and claps equivalent. Um, literally every, every ritual in my is food based pizza Monday, bagel Wednesday, craft beer Friday. Do you know, Steve, might even better if for those work based rituals that you've got, I think it could do with a bit of alliteration. I mean, what could we have on, uh, I don't know, Maltesers Monday? I don't know. I feel like we could, we could have some alliteration to make those even stickier. 
Oh, I love this one. Kate has got a non-food based one. The uh, check-in question of the week, a non-work related one. Oh, actually, I'll give you an, I've, I've got some kind of team, team based ideas I'll talk on. A work bake off. Quarterly all hands, really nice. <laughs> I love that, Sandra. One of my team awards the seal of approval by putting a toy seal on someone's desk. That's great. It was birthday cake, Prosecco. Um, do you know what I'm really interested in as well? If anyone has translated any of this stuff to uh, virtual. So is there a virtual seal of approval? I don't know, in a, in a GIF form, I wonder. Saturday night remote drinks. That's nice. Ooh, and Saturday night drinks for a team. Uh, that's interesting, kind of going into the weekend. Quizzes on a Thursday. Yeah, bring your own uh, food and drinks. It's virtual. Yeah, interesting. Leslie says it stopped. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, if anyone's definitely got any virtual ones, uh, new how I'm going to come on to some ideas about what we can do with teams. Yep. Fee, I think that's nice that your check-ins are a bit of a ritual. I think that check-ins could, like, I think that is one way, if a check-in feels like a routine, how we could turn that into a ritual is interesting. I've got kind of routine plus is one of the ideas for action I want to talk to you about. Um, Oh, Sally, these are good questions. I set up a coffee break on Wednesday afternoons for the whole team to get together for half an hour or so, and we discuss a random topic, <laughs> which I was like, interesting. And then I read your question. That's really interesting. If you were arrested, <laughs> what would your family and friends think you did? Ooh, what a question. I love, I love that. <laughs> you could learn a lot about someone from those answers. Brilliant. Um, oh, I love that, Sean. Um, I work for a Swedish company, Fika, every Friday about making time for friends and colleagues over a cuppa. Um, yeah, when I used to work for Virgin, I used to go to Geneva and they sort of used to have Fika on a, on a Friday. Ah, oh, some lovely examples here, everybody. Uh, yeah, Fika every day. We're just like, just cake every day. That's <laughs> so like Fika every day. Though for Steve, some alliteration there for you, Fika Friday. Um, okay, so let's now do individual. What are some of the things that you do on your own that have that specialness to it, that you find re revitalizing the equivalent of my uh, kind of my breakfast or whatever, whatever else is. I think, you know, some people said maybe come into pod plus, which is amazing. And um, that's very, that's very nice that we can be a ritual for you. But what is something that you, that you do individually? Let us know. Oh, <laughs> Karine, I love how specific you got eggs on toast. I wonder how poached, scrambled, or do you do you vary? And the papers outside in the sunshine after Sunday run. I mean, that just sounds like bliss. That sounds like that sounds like I need that ritual in my life. Going to bed with a book, Elaine says, morning run, a cold shower every morning. Kate, you're hardcore. Uh, it's good for your circulation, I think, isn't it? Um, gaming, creative writing, martial arts, <laughs> poached always. You say that, but I am not a good poacher. Not good. I tried everything. You know, when they say put vinegar in the water and then my poached eggs just taste bad. Maybe you've got some tips. Ah, Sarah and our team, morning walks the dog. Ah, uh, me and Leslie are both early mornings, uh, 5.40. Sally, that's lovely. Standing barefoot in our garden. We've got a lot of ants in our garden. So I'm not sure. I'm not sure. <laughs> you could end up with a few nightmares. Uh, oh, Kerry and Sally are both early morning gardeners. Oh, I love that, Chloe. Wine and crisps. I mean, Sarah, Sarah, gin and tonic and crisps. She would be all over that one. She likes... If anyone ever wants to buy Sarah a gift, she likes scampy fries. That's it. Her, her, her boyfriend, Tom, who they've been together for like ever. Uh, I think he buys her like, you know, those scampy fries that you see in pubs on the like the drop downs. <laughs> I think they buy them for each other for gifts. I mean, I asked for chocolate, but scampy fries does it for Sarah. Exercise for breakfast. Loads of things. Oh, Peloton ride. Who's, who's on Peloton? Oh, Laura. I already knew you've got a Peloton. Uh... You need to find me, Laura, at Ride Your Own Race, obviously. Um, okay, so we've got some ideas there for collective versus individual. What I would love to do now is um, share a few more things so that we can all have, have a few more kind of rituals together or support other people with their... Um, uh, Red, Sarah from the team, would you mind sharing the link to the pod sheet? Brilliant. Um, okay, so I've got a few things I want to talk about. The first is... Um, a matrix to help you to reflect on your rituals where you have may have uh, some strengths area and where you might have some gaps. So 
the way I was thinking about this, uh, I mean, I, I've tried to force a framework a little bit, everybody, but it did, it did help me think about it. Um, so first of all, I think that it is interesting to reflect on the frequency of rituals. Um, and I don't think I don't think rituals have to be every day like my breakfast one is but I was also thinking about some rituals that I have that are far less frequent and that's okay too but I think it's good to have have both so I think part of the matrix is on how frequent they are high frequency so you know like every day or every week low frequency um so they they intentionally happen just not as often and then the other thing I thought is what we just talked about of individual versus collective and so I think this is a useful thing for you to think of for, for yourself. So, for example, if I was to go, oh, what have I got in all of these different quadrants? My high frequency individual one, well, that would be kind of my early breakfast. And that is super important to me. And I've been, it's, it's also super sticky because I've been doing it for such a long time. And then if I was to think of an individual one that is kind of sort of low frequency, um, I have just, this is a new one for me, um, but a learning day. Uh, it's a new one for me and I'm absolutely loving it. I'm actually doing it tomorrow. And um, so I've I've found it hard more recently to learn within a day because there's just so much going on and my brain's a bit distracted. So what I've introduced like every month, every six weeks, and I appreciate I can do this because I've my own company and it, it probably wouldn't have been as easy if I was in Microsoft, but I've introduced a learning day where I basically just go take myself away from the busyness of the day to day. I take three or four books and I basically sit down and I read and I absorb and I post in it. I mean, I must look really strange. Everyone else is going for a chat and I take a tote bag full of books and post-it notes and just, I'm just in my very happy place. But um, I've enjoyed doing it so much that I'm now really trying to protect the time for those learning days. It's something that's really, I'm really, really enjoying. And to be honest, if I was still at Microsoft, I think I would take my holiday for it. Like, I think I, I, it's, it's actually revitalizing for me enough that I would use some of my holiday, like maybe one day a quarter to go and have a learning day. We, Sarah and I were actually quite inspired by uh, Bill Gates does reading weeks once a year. So he takes a whole week out and Sarah was like, I think we should have a reading week. And I said, I would find that very stressful because I would feel like I was too far away from the business for a whole week. That would just not to be good for me but a learning day I can just about manage um this is one kind of high frequency Sarah and I do this a lot together so it's collective and high frequency is win of the week so often on a Friday we'll just text each other and be particularly if we haven't managed to speak to each other that much that week like we've been doing a lot sort of in parallel rather than together we will just at the end of a Friday say what has your win of the week been and it is such a nice little ritual because it's, it's always different the thing that we have as our win of the week is always different um, and it's just quite a nice moment to be to sort of recognize what somebody else values so that's one that we have there and then um, I was thinking the collective low frequency is either what I think it was like the long lunch or, or an away day so um, Sarah and I are quite a fan of the away day uh, and the other Sarah that you can see here and the Sarah that's not here in Leeds we've got an away day coming up I think maybe next month uh, but that feels like a collective ritual where we tr I mean, we will we will do work because we love our work but it's also some nice food we're very intentional about having nice food and actually we have been doing Sarah Ellis and I have been doing that for maybe 15 years even before we started the business we used to have an away day and we would meet with afternoon tea and it was just like away like it was like a bit of a, a ritual for our uh, ritual for our relationship actually so anyway I think this is quite a good uh, way to reflect on your rituals and now I've obviously filled all these out because I was thinking about it but I was probably thinking um, these are the ones that I would like to do more of was my reflection and um, I'd actually like to have some higher frequency um, collective rituals that we do as a team um, because I think um, I, I don't think I've really thought about them and that's why I'd like to build some in so First, first thing, do you think that's useful, everybody? Is it a useful framework or have I forced it too much? Let me know in chat. You can, I'm not sensitive, by the way. You can be like, totally forced, Helen, or quite useful. <laughs> ah, okay, useful, I think, Maddie. Uh, slightly on the fence, Maddie. <laughs> oh, good, good, good. Okay, we're on the useful scale. I'm always, I'm always, <laughs> I just, I think they just help me stretch my thinking frameworks. Okay, brilliant. 
All right, a few more ideas. These ones I'd love us to help each other. So routine plus, this is another idea for action. This one we talked about on the podcast, but I wondered if we could help each other with it a little bit. So the idea here is if you want to create some rituals, more rituals, start with some routines. So I'm not going to get, I'm not going to ask you to do this because I want to do it on yours. But for example, if I wanted to create some more of these things, I might think about what are some collective routines that I could turn into rituals. But I would love to just see if we can help each other. Does anybody, can anyone share something? Let's do it as a team one, because that might help all of us. What is like a team-based routine? So something that you do that is quite efficient and you do it regularly and it's a, you know, with those, back to those definitions, it's comfortable. Okay, Leon, we'll go with yours first because you got in there. Okay, for team meetings and Monday, Monday huddles, brilliant. Let's take that, that's something that we do routinely for the team, it's efficient, generally easy. How do you think, and I do not know the answer to this question, but how do you think we could turn, what ideas have we got collectively for how we could turn the Monday huddle, the weekly meeting into something that is a bit more ritualistic? So it is a bit more, you know, a bit more meaningful. Uh, it's a bit more vitalizing. What, what do you think, because some people might already do this. Some people might already have a regular meeting that feels more ritualistic. So giving everyone the chance, chance to talk. Mindful moments, bringing some consciousness into the meeting. I might write some of these down. I can't, I can't do them as quick as you say. You're writing them, everyone. This is always a good sign. So you've got mindful moment. What's that? The format is best, next, help, request, delivery. Hayley, that's very efficient. Uh, different meeting. Uh, yeah, yeah. Kind of divide the who and the what in the meeting. <laughs> home bake on rotor i like the, the emotional check-ins really nice in fact there's um like form score is a, a way that you can do kind of that mental health check-in i think it's um like a way that people can kind of share that with each other one word check-in yeah one word ask them what they're looking for and two yeah i was reading this i'm going to give these books away this this week on uh, we're going to do a book competition every single week we're going to put it on instagram and I was reading about one in here. Is it this one? What does it say? Here we go. Uh, a CEO called Jody Kovitz, the founder of Move the Dial, a company devoted to changing the story of women in tech. Uh, their Monday meetings, uh, they come together called a grounding ritual, interesting, to connect on a human level and invest in the culture and connectivity of teams. Each person shares three things, something they're grateful for, personal, professional, something they're proud of, and something they're struggling with. So it's quite maybe quite nice um so uh grateful proud and or and or something they're struggling with um so yeah maybe that maybe that's if, if that is a routine i think how you can turn that one into something that feels uh maybe more mindful and vitalizing people could be interesting the other thing i think is um the feelings first now someone mentioned this so if you want to create more rituals don't start with the oh the, here's a list of rituals I'll try and bring them in start with what what is the thing that you're missing like what is the thing that you would like to feel more of like do you want to feel more inspired do you want to feel more energized do you want to feel more calm so maybe let's head into chat really I know we've got three minutes left but let's head into chat really quickly what is a feeling that you would like more of at work and let's just see we'll take the first two and let's just see if we can share some ideas okay so Karine says inspiration uh, so we're going to take that one. Two people on inspiration. I'm, I'm vulnerable. OK, so let's take inspiration and vulnerability. Anyone got any ideas for how you could, if we started with feelings, how a ritual could help you to feel more inspired? What could you do? Uh, I would say things like uh, like the like listening to a podcast, going for a walk, listening to a podcast, like being outside so you're disconnected and listening to a podcast could be really useful. Um, what if we, lovely question, that's always a great one, what if we, or how could we, or how might I? Really nice idea, Sean. changing up your Instagram feed. That's lovely. I think on Twitter as well, you can kind of, you can create those um, lists of people. I think I mentioned this to you once that I once got added to the, someone added me to a quite interesting list, which I thought was quite, that's quite insulting, the quite interesting, because I think I didn't make the very interesting. That's nice, Kate. Ask someone to share their most inspiring uh, person's quote and story. Um, what about the vulnerability one, everybody? Like, if, if we wanted a team to have more vulnerability, so more psychological safety, anything that people would think we can do, we could do there to help people. One of the things that I've, um, we like, 
organizations that we work with on, on um, cycle to safety, one of the things they do, yeah, mistake meetings, what Steve is saying, uh, lots of teams have regular mistake meetings, so they make a really safe environment and they basically talk about some of the stuff that's gone wrong, but in a really safe way, like to, so that people can learn from each other and like don't make the same mistake ag again and basically don't kind of hide mistakes. So that's um, Money Supermarket and their tech team, they do that. Um, Really, what do we know about each other? Yes, actually, more about me. That is a tool on um, Amazing If Learning. There is a tool called More About Me, and it's a PDF that you can share with your team where they can share, uh, you know, lots of lots of different things uh, with each other. Actually, links it links to this last idea for action. Uh, you know, one team, one dream slash one team, one ritual. Um, something that Sarah mentioned a while ago, which I think could be good for this point on vulnerability. Let me write this down for you. Getting people to talk about one of the four H's. I don't know if any of you remember this when Sarah talked about it, but it's the four H's. I texted this morning and I was like, what were those four H's? Heartbreak, hero, hopes, or history. Basically, people can pick one of the four H's to talk about. So who's their hero? What's the hope they've got? What's a kind of a piece of history that they that they kind of identify with or kind of what's the heartbreak they have had? But this is kind of maybe one way in which people could show some of that vulnerability. Um, I did an interview last week or the week before for this new learning program I'm going to be on. I will stop in 30 seconds, everyone, because I know you need to go. But they have they put in the chat, so I think this is a good way to translate it to virtual, a menu of questions. And what they did, it was, for this, it was a way that we could all learn more about each other and sort of I was subtly interviewed. Um, they put a menu of questions in the chat and I got to pick the question I wanted to answer um, and then everybody else answered it as well. So they learned more about me and I learned more about them. But I quite like this idea of a menu of questions in case it helps, because I quite like that random question earlier about what your, what your fans, friends and family think you got arrested for. The questions that I remember, because these are the ones that I picked, were what music would you like at your funeral? interesting question uh and what's your most memorable meal so they were kind of you know they, were, they weren't the normal they weren't what book are you reading at the moment uh but they you know they, I think they were quite interesting and, and got a different conversation going so whether it's the four h's or a menu of questions where maybe at the start of a meeting people pick from it so that you can learn more about me and more about we um I think it could be interesting Super. Okay, we are at the end of time. I know that you all have busy days, lots to do. I hope that has helped. I hope the new people might might return. Uh, to, I think next week we are doing role models. Um, it's a good podcast on role models. Actually, another topic that isn't. I don't think it's covered that much, and we've got um, lots lots on that for you. Uh, so thank you for being here. Thank you for for coming back, all the populous returners, uh, and have a good rest of your week. <laughs> a video on poached eggs. I'll try. The cling film method. I'll try, Leon. <laughs> I'll let you know I'll get on. <laughs> Take care, everybody. Have a good rest of your week. See you soon. Bye.